Mike Fairgilly, 16 Fern Lane. Uh, with regard to time, knowing that I might run slightly longer than three minutes, I've asked Carol Bystrick of 18 Fern Lane, Mark Dayton of 13 Fern Lane, and Marjorie Fairgilly to see through their time if I need it. Um, at that point in time, after the three minutes, we have to step up and announce a continued time. Fair enough. Uh, as of this meeting, the town's attorney and therefore the town has not uh, either called or responded to the letter that I presented on March 22nd uh, from attorney George Schuber. I'd like to carry that letter and my comments from all prior uh, meetings relating to the proposed private road ordinance or to this, uh, this meeting on agenda. Uh, I continue to assert that through its action over some 80 years, the town has in fact treated and accepted firmly as a town road. There are other matters in the letter from Attorney Schrober that are undressed, and I consider them open for further discussion. If necessary, at some point in the future, we can talk about litigation. Uh, if and when that occurs depends on ju not just the written words of the proposed ordinance we're discussing tonight, uh, but actions therein. Um, Mr. Philhauer, Mr. Cox, I'd like to remind you both of prior conversations, the tone and tenor of the uh, corrections of the language included, and I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth, but just to, to in general, was to include some limited surface paving, uh, potentially at the discretion of public works. That was the tone of the discussion and that is not contained within this document 273-17. Uh, to bring that to your attention, that's something I'd like to have openly discussed this evening. Section 273.17b. It is still onerous and at the same time too broad. It restricts the paving of roads that I just discussed, including Fern Lane, uh, which I'll uh, remind you that the town has admitted to paving at least twice since the year 2000. It has never been the intent of this discussion to bring the road up to the town of East Hampton standard. However, that should not preclude paving, which has been done in the, in the past, and would be far more effective and efficient than the haphazard patching, which has taken place since. Uh, just for clarification on that slightly sensationalized River East article, uh, it was never my intent to bring this up to the standard. Section 273.17 still leaves the potential for extreme financial burden on the residents of Fern Lane. The second section allows the town too much discretion, which costs could simply be uh, taken. Mark, could I ask you to step up? Can you stand right there, sir, and just state your name, your address, and where you're proceeding with time? Mark Dayton, 17 Fern Lane. This is my time. Too much to consider the most. Thank you. As I was saying, Section 273.17c allows for the town too much discretion as to which cost could simply it could simply choose to avoid and detrimentally assess or charge properties. This intimidating and penalizing practice has not been used elsewhere 
and could be used unfairly against residents of Burn Lane and other private roads on the list. As was stated pre previously, I believe there is sufficient proof and action to refute section 273-18 in its entirety. Including this section in this ordinance only serves to invite a legal challenge of future date. So here we are today. Town Council is intent on pushing forward this flawed ordinance. Actions, not just words in particular, are important at this point. If any of you, and I speak directly to the council, have driven down Byron Road, Hoe Road, Park Road, Tennyson Road, Pine Trail, Mountain Trail, Brook Trail, Laurel Trail, I would challenge you to show, to show on the record that these roads are in similar condition to Fern Lane. I have pictures if you'd like to discuss them after this meeting, I'll be happy to share. Uh, in an informal setting. Uh, Burn Lane has long, long stretches of patch and it's poorly, poorly patched and repatched versus these other roads I've mentioned, which are generally clear with the occasion of patch and repair. Burn Lane is more patched than paved. In closing, actions speak louder than words and ordinances. If you truly have the taxpaying residents of Fern Lane's best interest in mind this evening, show it by ordering the Public Works Department to make immediate repairs to Fern Lane at this meeting. I thank you for your time. Pam Hatfield, 37 Fern Lane. Uh, thank you to the council for your continued consideration in the Fern Lane matter. As you know, this has been a long and arduous process. I do feel the language in the revised ordinance is more reflective of past services, with the exception of sections 273, 16B, and C which implies the residents will be charged on top of the taxes we already pay to fully pave the road, should this come about. This would create an outrageous burden for the residents of Fernland. As you're well aware, the road has been paved multiple times in the past without additional expenses incurred by the residents. Would you consider amending this section to provide some type of town council discretion. As you know, many of the residents are senior citizens on fixed incomes. Based on earlier road paving projections, when we first started these conversations, of a $550,000 bill that was proposed to saddle the residents with, um, I would just like uh, what would this look like for residents in the future should this action come about? And how, how likely is this activity to happen if we have to pave fully Fern Lane in order to reach satisfactory resolution? Fern Lane is the longest road, has the highest number of impacted homesteads, and is the most neglected of the private roads on the list. Will the town be placing private way signs on all the limited maintenance private roads? As many on the list do not currently have signs indicating they are private. Please help me understand, and this is a critical question that I've asked a couple of times. Please help me understand what the residents can reasonably expect in the way of road repair and when the work will be started and completed. What is the process in the future should the ordinance pass? Are the residents supposed to monitor? Is the town going to be proactive and looking at potholes? What is the process for maintaining the road going forward? Thank you for your consideration. Um, thank you for considering a solution that provides benefit to both the residents and the town. I appreciate your efforts and I do look forward to a satisfactory resolution. Respectfully, Pam Hatfield. And I did send a copy to you as well of that. Thank you. 
Thank you. Grace Ishmael 13, Third Lane. I carefully read the proposed revised ordinance on private roads, and I am concerned that it states that pothole repair is now covered, but that resurfacing, if needed, will only be in small sections. Such short sightedness has been the problem on Fern Lane for the past few years. Most recently, potholes were allowed to go down to the roadbed before being filled. Then, when filled, the area of the large potholes developed smaller potholes around the ridge or edge of the original potholes. I have personally seen snow plows get caught in these bridges time and again and in turn bring up large chunks of asphalt we find left on the side of the lane after a snowstorm. To me, this is a lesson in what I call pothole development 101. Now the proposed ordinance states that if resurfacing takes place, it will only be in small sections what will happen when resurfaced areas are joined to the existing road? Pothole Development 102. You can see an example of this as we drove in uh, this evening to this meeting, where one section that had been paved was joined to another section that had been paved right on the entrance. And there is a large pothole that has developed there. At the last selectman's meeting, Mr. Phil Howard stated that even an entire road might be resurfaced. <clears throat> Why was that not considered? To me, it would make much more fiscal sense. Thank you for your consideration. No. You have uh, the one item on there on your. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, we organized my packet here and I put it on the bottom. Let me invite the uh, owners. Jeremy, do you want to make comments on this? Or do you want me to do it? So the council has uh, uh, one uh, contract this evening. It is the contract for uh, construction of the access road to the uh, for the electrical system relocation related to the proposed improvements for the airline trail uh, off the property that is occupied by the WPCA. Uh, the council has uh, in their in their printed packet the first several pages of the bid document in the electronic version. I think the entire uh, bid document will enclose. Uh, the lowest uh, lowest responsible bidder was uh, Priority Landscaping, uh, and they have been uh, recommended to you by the engineer and by the Parks and Recreation staff in the amount of fifty-six thousand dollars for that. That is within, you'll recall, uh, the budget that was established for the project using grant funds from the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection as well as funds in the town's uh, capital improvement. This is fairly simple. Second. I'd like to second any discussion. Any none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Seven, 
in the starting, whereas in the starting in Hannah Square, the town of East Hampton, April 1995, the Public Works Department has Wayne Tanner Senior Superintendent State, and whereas after displaying his can do attitude and hard work, Daniel Sargent was promoted to Main Tanner 3 in November of 2013. And whereas Daniel Sargent throughout his 27 year career in Public Works Department has demonstrated excellent work, ethics, and positive attitude, and always strive to cheerfully provide the best service to the residents of East Hampton. Now, Therefore, we East Ham Town Council, on behalf of the citizens of East Hampton, congratulate Daniel, Daniel Sargent in his retirement, thank him for his many years of service to the town, and send him our best wishes for enjoyable retirement for his family and friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Indeed, two such public hearings this morning, Amendment Chapter 273 of the Code of County Campaign, the complete sidewalks that are eliminated by the road. Point out. We've been talking about this for a while. We've made some modifications. Uh, I might take a moment and just touch on a couple of items. First off, uh, I put on the council's desk tonight, and it has not been uh, published to the website yet, but we'll certainly do that. Uh, some uh, recommended changes by the town attorney uh, related to um, ensuring that whatever work we do is discretionary uh, at, at any private road. Uh, and so you'll see those changes, and, and I would encourage you to use those, use that version, uh, should you send this to public, uh, to public hearing. The other thing I'll comment on are the various questions that have, been, that, that have been asked. One of them was about the small pavement portion. Uh, that was a direct response to the comments that were made at one of the previous meetings about, is there a way that we can move ahead with um, something other than patching potholes that we could, if the, uh, if the public works director thought it were appropriate, uh, the council had given him or her enough license to go ahead and take off some surface and put down some fresh asphalt. Sometimes that might involve some small base repairs, but generally it's not intended to uh, be large sections or major base repair, right? That's the intent of the ordinance. And the other piece of that puzzle was to take away the language that we had suggested about um, uh, severe disrepair, I think is the phrase we would use. So we removed that section of the language, removed uh, any discussion of uh, giving the discretion to the public works director about what are things that, how can the road get to a condition where we just aren't going to work on it? Concern was that we would sort of, uh, that we or our successors would, in, in a sort of a mindful way, let something go to the point where it's easy for us to say that. We don't want to do that. In its place was a was was put in that section D under the 273.17. That's the section that basically says larger repairs could be done at the discretion of the town council. So that's what was added uh, to the ordinance. Um, in an effort to try and address some of those things. Um, the other questions that have come up relate to uh, some legal issues. I'm not going to address those. I'll let the town attorney address that as necessary. Uh, but the other items were related to uh, the question that Ms. Hatfield asked this evening about private way signs. It's very possible that we will. I don't know that we've made a conscious effort to look around for those private way signs and make sure they're where they belong we should make sure that they are identified as private roads uh, at the at their intersection with a town road. Uh, that's sort of been the custom 
uh, at least it should be the custom or at least the intent of, of the department. The other question is a little bit harder to answer and that's the question of what repairs would occur when. Um, we don't have any defined time frame for these sorts of things, although that's certainly something that the Public Works Director and I have talked about. One of the things that we hope comes out of this discussion and comes out of uh, a decision by the council to formalize its position on private roads is a more routine activity, an annual activity by the Public Works Department. Uh, that the Public Works Director and I would try to put together so that our successors look at that and say, okay, it's, take up the time, it's August, we need to start looking at, or it's May, and we need to start looking at private roads and making sure that they're taken care of. This, in the same way that we look at our gravel roads and say, okay, as soon as they dry out, we have to get back onto those and we smooth those and we have to pay attention to another X number of them. That's our intent on how we would plan to implement a decision made by the council on directing or authorizing, perhaps more accurately, authorizing these specific types of use of, of taxpayer dollars on private roads. So I wish I had a better answer for the question of when and, and what can we expect. Um, I'm looking at uh, emails that have come in uh, just late this afternoon, this evening, uh, just to see if there's anything that's worth, uh, that I can rather specifically address. Um, I mean, there is certainly concern about the condition of Fern Lane. I don't think anybody would argue otherwise. Fern Lane is in a rough shape. Uh, and, and certainly it's merit is of some work. Uh, it's just the level at which the council wants to make. So, um, there were, a series of changes made. You saw the April 4 version of the agenda or the ordinance rather was in the in the packet, in the agenda packet. And then as I said, I gave you a couple of changes this evening uh, that were just recommended by the town attorney today uh, related to discretion. Matthew is in the audience, and he could certainly answer that. I don't know. Uh, I think it was in May State. No, I, I think uh, the times when they do those words, they take a different type of road. But um, when you're just looking at the name, say the road, I, I don't think it is really something to take into account, but what kind of, whether it's a private road or, but I think there is kind of an inherent quality to like when something. So I think, yeah, I think in short, I don't think, other than naming vernacular, I don't think there's anything that necessarily means to us here in East Hampton. Other places it does. Streets go one way, avenues go another way, that kind of thing. But to us in East Hampton, it's really what the developer or the persons who created the roadway decided to call it. So there's no difference in Either construction or not by the name of the road, not by, not the, by the moniker of the road. Okay. I have one. Uh, Mr. Cox, based on your assessment that you just shared a few moments ago mm -hmm. regarding Fern Lane, uh, has there been a conversation with you and the public works director about some uh, needed repairs that might be considered in a short period of time? Um, short answer is no, not in any specificity. I think we have talked in generalities uh, about, um, for example, the, the addition of the small amounts of paving uh, felt appropriate to us because that's certainly something that Fern Lane could use and perhaps in the future other uh, private roads could use. Um, really, from our perspective, one of the other items that we were looking for is for the public works director to in the future and, in, and certainly currently to get a clear directive from the town. This is what we want you to do. We want you to maintain these private roads according to a standard. And as you see in the, in the ordinance, we try to, to 
apply a basic standard of what would we do on other similarly situated public roads. Uh, so while we haven't talked specificity about things that we would do necessarily on Fern Lane, I think that Matt would agree with me that uh, the ability to do some very basic paving there probably is very helpful. Uh, can you envision a, a plan laid out after review of all of the uh, private roads that are listed here in this ordinance uh, or need repairs just like we have prepared a document for all the other streets in town? Like, for example, my street, I think, gets an A minus. <laughs> Some others get a B plus, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but they've all been looked at. Uh, is that, do you believe that is uh, your intent? Well, that's quite honestly, Kevin, that's what the intent of this document is. Once passed, we're then allowing that. Right now, there's nothing on the book that's really allowing oh, that to do the assessment. And that's what we're trying to do is say, oh, okay, I, I'm just, road lane exists. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that completely, sir. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm asking, though, is I understand. I'm just asking, uh, is that something that uh, you uh, believe, Mr. Cox, is something that will be uh, prepared in a certain amount of time? Yeah, that's what I was alluding to earlier. I think that's intent. That's the intent. That's that process that the director and I would like to make sure that we can put in place for ourselves and it becomes part of the routine of the town. Uh, as our successor, I, I appreciate that. That's the intent. We are, we might not be choosing the residents on Fern Lane with this, but this has come a long way from where we were uh, a number of months ago. You actually are now solidifying and putting in writing what you believe the expectation should be. Any comments? Similar to the way we have roads laid out of, of kind of an assessment of the project. Yeah, I know how you can't have it on part of this, but that would be good if we want to prove this. And then six months later, there's still not been a plan of when the road's going to be looked at. Because like we are saying, you do want to guarantee payment somewhere. Yeah. Sort of want an assessment and, and yeah. a plan. We can begin to work on that and have a new draft or something for you. More discussion. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, item C, this point I'd like to excuse uh, myself from this afternoon. You want to shut it? Well, you have to. I don't remember. He's probably down the hall. Yeah. 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 Theoretically, a fairly innocuous item, but I understand his need to excuse yeah. himself. Um, so, uh, this item is a is a is a proposed correction of a an action that was taken by the council a few years ago to accept. Uh, the first road in the Skyline Estates subdivision, Sunrise Lane. Uh, at the time that the, I think the Plan Commission and at least the Town Council at the time uh, in 2019 when the Town considered acceptance of the road, it did so looking at an incorrect map. 
Uh, in other words, it looked at a map that was from a previous iteration of that subdivision that, had, that did not reflect revisions that were made subsequent to that original map. As a result, uh, the area that got accepted by the town was, a, a, call it 100 or some odd feet off from what actually existed in the field. And that's an important distinction. In the field, if we were to go out to Sunrise Lane right now, we would see the road is in the proper location. The markers related to the edges of properties and corners and whatnot of the right of way and of the adjoining properties are all in their proper location as they should have been based on the map that was used and approved for the subdivision. The action, however, to accept that was wrong. And as a result, the lands that were transmitted to the town were wrong. Uh, after some discussion with the planning and, and uh, zoning administrator and with the town attorney, uh, we landed on the best way to fix this is to use the same process that you do for uh, accepting roads these days and accept it as a correction. Uh, and then that will authorize the staff to go ahead and clean it up. Basically make sure that the land transactions back and forth get done uh, and all those parcels are reflected accurately uh, as they should have been in the subdivision. So you have a, a resolution in front of you. Uh, I think it was placed on the table tonight because I think there was a, uh, it came out a little bit later, but you have a resolution in front of you that identifies this is a correction, uh, outlines a little bit of the history and then accepts the road in the correct location with a map that identifies not only the correct location, but also identifies how the parcel is transferred. I'd like to make a motion for the resolution of correcting the intersection of Sunrise Lane and Sky Line State Subdivision as stated in our map. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any discussion? Ask for yes. I just wanted to know if you wanted to confirm nays or abstentions. You want to confirm any nays or abstentions? Or... Okay, you're good. All right, just confirm it. Sports updates. Well, I think we can support. I have nothing else you want. Contact these days. No, sir, not right now. No. Uh, I do have a few things to update on the athletic field committee. Uh, the committee did meet uh, last Thursday afternoon. Uh, as is not a surprise when you put down a new sod field. Uh, there are, on occasion, maybe a little dip or two in the field, especially in the back and the uh, outfield. And uh, those minor repairs, I believe, were made this past Monday. Uh, the track and the uh, the uh, tennis court are going to be resurfaced. Uh, there was a conversation about possibly waiting to resurface both the track and the tennis court after school got out in uh, the third week of June. Uh, but we were uh, told that if, in fact, we did not do the track when it had been planned or scheduled, we would have to wait a year to do that. And it would also still be done at the same time, which, if it's a problem this year, it will be a problem next year. So the track will be done as planned, hopefully, uh, once we get uh, days above 50 at night. Uh, the tennis court could possibly be delayed till the middle of uh, June so that the uh, tennis team can utilize the facility before the final uh, surface is covered. Uh, but that's still a conversation and we're waiting for a word from the contractor. I surmise the contractor, that contractor is not as tied to a schedule as the track. Keep in mind, to resurface the track is going to take almost two weeks. It's a very lengthy and slow process. Other than that, I have nothing else to add. Okay, so the safety is two weeks 
Okay. It doesn't take the whole season off. Very good. Anyone else have a report? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Item nine, new business. Do a possible approval of police department general order 5.8 traffic accident investigation. I'll invite the uh, Western officer who's been in this permit to do it. Good evening, as uh, always. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, tonight you have before you a existing general order, uh, general order 5.8 traffic accident investigation. Uh, you originally, uh, it was approved on August 15, 2018. Recently, the uh, Police Officer Standards and Training Council, under General Notice 21-06, required certain changes to the way the police department investigates uh, fatal motor vehicle accidents. Uh, the change was a result of Bill Number 1201, an act concerning responsible and equitable regulation of adult use cannabis, which took effect April 1, 2022. The change now requires the use of a drug recognition expert, commonly referred to as a DRE, to test any surviving operator in a fatal motor vehicle accident that the officer suspects at the time of the accident to be under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. It's a very minor change, uh, and the change is noted in red. So that is a very good question, and the answer is no. So where do you get expertise? Currently, um, there are 50 drug recognition experts in the state of Connecticut, and any well, drug. That's correct. So as a result of the bill, the state is struggling to certify uh, additional DREs. Um, we have put in for one person to be certified as a DRE. Uh, the problem is, is the state <clears throat> police academy um, has not followed through with proper training, so they're trying to play catch up. So currently, some of the officers that would want to be DREs don't have the certifications and the classes are not being held. The class is very extensive. You have to usually go down to actually Arizona or Florida to do the testing. Usually the testing is done on incarcerated individuals um, who may have been under the influence of alcohol and or drugs. It's a very extensive process. There are blood pressure tests that you have to take and you have to meet very specific qualifications. So the hope is, is that we will get one certified for the town of East Hampton within a year. Currently, all that training is grant funded. Um, we're trying to do it sooner than later so the grant funding does not run out. But we, the closest one that we have, I believe, is the state police troop K, who has a certified <coughs> drug recognition expert on staff. It's going to be a dilemma. But remember, this is only required in cases in a fatal motor vehicle accident. How many of those do we have on average? So 2018, we had a total of five people die as a result of fatal motor vehicle accidents. It was not my first year, good year as the chief here. And that was, they all happened my first year. How many accidents? Two accidents, three accidents, I'm sorry. Three accidents. And, uh, Last year, we had one fatal motor vehicle accident. It was a motorcycle accident on Route 16. And so far this year, uh, we have had none. And hopefully, it stays that way for the next five, 10 years or forever, quite frankly, in my hope. Questions? Yes. And during that time, there was no growth in DRE expert. And so, how did you handle? Um, so in the first fatal motor vehicle accident, the operators responsible uh, died at the scene. Uh, both operators died at the scene. So there would be no reason to test either operator because they were deceased. Um, in the second case, uh, it was a motor vehicle accident right out front of the town hall. The operator was not under the influence. It was more a um, 
traffic control issue. And the third one was a motor vehicle accident involving a motorcycle into the back of the vehicle. And the operator was deceased at the scene, so there was no need to test it. We always have the option um, during a fatal motor vehicle accident if the operator is deceased, that it's standard operating procedure for the deceased operator to have his blood tested for any evidence of drug and or alcohol by the medical examiner. Second. Motion second. Discussion. None. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. We discussed the town hall on private road. The item I wanted to ask was the agenda. Other than having fear of myself, we won't. Maybe nobody was here when the questions were. Contracts were drawn up for the town hall. And part of those discussions were that I was quite adamant about that the road be a town road and not a private, big private road. It makes no sense for me to have a town hall on a private road. So somewhere along the lines, that language never got put into the contract or anywhere. And so what I would like is to the support on having the town manager look into how we go about Obviously, the road right now is not the town standard. The town code, you only have a binder code on a portion of it. Obviously, uh, construction, what that up town standard for accepting it. I'll just clarify one point on that. You're right, it does, it only has a binder course uh, after you come in off of 66. Uh, and then it has surface course once you get on as our part of uh, the circle. It is, however, um, structurally a town road in terms of it's structurally to our standard. Um, that I think is important. It's an important distinction related to this road. There is, it meets town standards for the construction of a road to be used by the public. It happens to be private. Just to clarify. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that
we're not taking any comments. I mean, um, no one else is paying on the crew. Yes, everyone else pays a portion of the bill. Right. In, in, as part of the association. So there are two parts of the of two parts to the amount that you pay. It is as as Chairman Philhauer mentioned, just just under fifteen thousand dollars a year. There are two parts that you pay, and it's it's paid on our uh, proportional square footage of all of the um, occupied or those with certificates of occupancy uh, on the road. The two components are for operation and maintenance. So plowing of the road, mowing of the grass along the road, and other maintenance activities that are undertaken in general, uh, in commonly owned properties around the, around the suburb, and that's our share of that. And then the other component is the replacement, if you will, the replacement piece, the amount that gets banked for future repairs and replacements under the program. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Attention, motion carries. David, you can get to that for us. Thank you. Okay. You have before us in your package to receive the transmittal for the budget for the task of the finance. So, Okay, 
Uh, thank you. I just wanted to touch on uh, four items, three of which are in uh, the reports and, and one that is not. Uh, wanted to just remind the community, especially those of us that drive on uh, Route 66 and those of us that drive on Edgerton and some of the streets adjoining Edgerton, that paving is coming. Um, 66 should start by the end of the week, uh, milling and paving uh, by the state and its contractor. And for Edgerton, you'll see the Department of Public Works out there beginning to do some sidewalk demolition, some curb demolition and preparations in that regard uh, for what will ultimately become the milling and repaving, or the, in the case of Edgerton, the pulverizing essentially and reshaping and repaving of that road. So the residents in that area should have received a letter from the Department of Public Works uh, last week sometime uh, outlining the next few weeks that they'll have to live through. But the hope is that by the end of May, uh, the folks on Edgerton are relieved of the burden of construction and will walk away for, knock on wood, 20 or so years for anything major. So that's becoming, uh, that's going on. Uh, Route 66 paving should uh, should be a week long process or so. Uh, Edgerton about the same, picking up right after the uh, work on the Highway 66 is done, happens to be the same contractor, I believe. <clears throat> the other thing I want to mention uh, is uh, related to the library's kindness extravaganza. You recall that the library received a grant uh, from the same entities that uh, provided the funding for last year's uh, Candyland. This year, they have focused on uh, kindness and the staff at the library put together a program involving four areas of kindness. So what they're doing right now is a silent art auction uh, for anyone and everyone who's interested and the proceeds from that will benefit uh, the Connecticut Draft Horse Rescue here in town, uh, as well as a, uh, an animal rescue uh, elsewhere. So that's ongoing and I encourage everyone to get down there. There's more than 120 pieces of art uh, done by local residents and others interested in our library. Uh, there is artwork that has been done by animals at uh, shelters and by animals at zoos. So there's a tiger print or a cheetah print or something of that sort down there. Interesting items, uh, lots to look at and certainly uh, we hope that you'll share uh, your charitable donations uh, so that we can pass it along. Um, in terms of uh, another item from my report, just a reminder to the community, uh, don't be like me, don't forget. Uh, your sewer bill is due this month. Please make sure you pay it uh, and uh, avoid any fees related to that. The last thing I'll mention is related to the lake. Uh, the aeration system, expects we expect that to come on later this week. So uh, we'll start to uh, churn the lake and make sure that we get as much oxygen in there as we can uh, by way of process. That'll, they'll take a measurements of dissolved oxygen in the lake prior to that. And then of course it gets monitored uh, throughout uh, the summer after that. Um, related to the lake, I will just add that uh, as you saw in my report, there is some continuing discussion as to what extra steps we should be taking in addition to the aeration to help make sure that the lake stays clean and clear as much as possible over the summer. Um, the aeration system alone operates well uh, and does its job when it isn't uh, pressured or burdened by excessive rain. And that's certainly what we've learned in our experience to this point. So we're looking at what our options might be for dealing with that better in this upcoming summer. So uh, watch for that. Lake Conservation Lake Commission is working hard at that. To, Expects to have some of those discussions in the upcoming month or so, so that we're ready if we need to be. Uh, in uh, those are my comments from the town manager's report this evening. I'll certainly answer any questions. As always, to online. To return two thousand five hundred eight dollars and eighty seven cents back to the town. Item 
think that goes three, seven, four, nine. Out raises to me to hear a discussion of acceptance of a private road when you're talking about the new ordinance to accommodate private roads. It's outrageous. We've been here four months, eight meetings. Any of one who's driven down Fern Line knows what the residents have been dealing with. We've had no relief at all from the town. I felt like we were getting really close to a a good solution, but after conversation tonight, I'm more confused than ever. I, I, you do recognize the current condition of Fern Lane is a direct result of blatant neglect when the town previously maintained the road. Okay. If all private roads are in why are the others maintained? Blatantly neglected. Blatantly, blatantly. When we call the town and request maintenance, blatantly neglected. Other private roads on this list are well in better condition. So clearly, they're maintained and they're getting response. I don't understand. We never got a clear answer why Fernlane could not be accepted. And we never got a clear answer on what the process is. I just want a solution. I'm tired. I'm sure all of you are tired. I think the residents of Fern Lane are due a solution. We have been waiting for four months. Nothing, nothing. I don't know. I've asked repeatedly, when can we expect something? No answer. I still have no answer tonight. We're going to public hearing. I don't know how long that process will take. When can the residents see some road repair. I mean, I'm afraid my vehicle is going to fall apart. I can't even zigzag down the road safely anymore. I would really, really love to come to some kind of a solution that will benefit all of us. And I don't think that what we're asking is outrageous. We pay our taxes. We get no tax breaks. And now we have a town hall that sits on a private road. You're going to remedy the solution for yourselves, yet we haven't reached a solution for other folks that have had to deal with this for a long period of time. I just think it's unreasonable, unreasonable and outrageous. And I would ask you guys to please reconsider and do the right thing for the people of the community who are serving. This is health, safety, and welfare for the residents. You deserve it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Respectfully, Jim Hatfield. Thank you, everybody. Here's your first comments package in March 2023 board summary. Summary. With that, I would like a motion for an executive session. Tagging negotiations by the collective bargaining agreement board, not like personal the item B personnel board. So moved. Also, with this, I'd like to invite Tom Lambert. Part of that meeting, you will adjourn, however, from that without doing any other business. Okay.